My name is Elton and this is a mini-series on my channel where I'll be taking a look at artifact sets that have similar effects and uses, specifically for characters who can utilize them well but have to go through some sort of constant debate of which one to choose. I hope to shed some light on how these sets differ and whether the trade-offs that each of them have are actually worth it, as well as how units can actually proc these effects properly. However, like always, I have to give a disclaimer. I'm not here to calculate percentages or crunch the numbers on any character's damage output. I am only here to explain how these artifacts work, how well they work in the current state of the game, and how well these effects can be taken advantage of. I am not here to shame, humiliate, or insult anyone who chooses one set over another for their builds. I also want to say that I do compile my information from the most up-to-date guides from the Kaching Mains website, as they have a plethora of very helpful information, so if you're wondering where I got all this knowledge, I got it from there. Now, with all that said and done, welcome to Artifact and Tagney. Onavia has recently been released in the game, and so is her accompanying artifact set, Nighttime Whispers in the Echoing Woods. This set is quite interesting as it's a set that involves Geo while prioritizing attack to scale off of. Given that there are only really two Geo characters who scale off of attack in proper ways, this will be quite the short video and discussion. But first, let's explain these artifact sets. Archaic Petra is the original Geo artifact set that gives a 15% Geo damage bonus with its 2 piece effect, while its 4 piece effect can give all party members a 35% elemental damage bonus when a Crystallized Shard is obtained of that specific element. This damage bonus lasts for 10 seconds and only one type of elemental damage bonus can be received at one time. The equipped character must be the one to pick up the shard as well. As for Nighttime Whispers in the Echoing Woods, or as I will now refer to it as, Nighttime Whispers, gives a pretty standard 18% attack with her 2 piece effect. Its 4 piece effect gives a 20% geo damage bonus for 10 seconds when the equipped character uses the elemental skill. And when the character has a shield from Crystallize, then they receive an additional 115% of the 20% geo damage bonus. This amounts to a total of a 50 geo damage bonus from the 4 piece effect. This additional 150% of the 20% geo damage bonus will last 1 second after the Crystallize shield disappears. Though, so, as I'm sure we are all well aware of by now, Crystallize sucks. It's a pretty bad reaction that can't deal any damage and has a really weak shield that it provides. And for a long while now, many people in the community have been voicing their opinions from as little as tweaking the Crystallize reaction to dealing some damage, to adding a few more Geo reactions, to even saying that Geo needs a complete overhaul altogether. But what Nighttime Whispers has done is convert the reaction to somewhat of a power source. Archaic Petra treated Crystallize Shards as a way for Geo to become a support for Pyro, Electro, Hydro, or Cryo. However, Nighttime Whispers allows for other elements to become support for Geo. Those elements that combine with Geo help provide a source of DPS increase for your Geo unit. Nighttime Whispers and Archaic Petra are pretty much exact opposites in what they aim to do. There also seems to be three hard requirements for this artifact set as well. The Geo character in question needs to 1. Scale off of attack, 2. Have an elemental skill with good enough uptime on activation, and 3. Be able to produce crystallized shards pretty easily. So I'll see if the characters meet these requirements. And as for Husk, I'll save what I have to say on that for the retrospective part of the video since that isn't the main part of the discussion. I wanted to pit Archaic Petra and Nighttime Whispers against each other due to their involvement with the Crystallize reaction, while Husk doesn't have any. If you do want more information on that though, I will link the episode down below where I did put Husk of Ock in the Dreams and Archaic Petra against each other. So, when it comes to characters who can use Nighttime Whispers, Navia and Ningguang come to mind. Starting with Navia, she is the person that this set is made for. Her skill deals more damage based on how many Crystallize Shards that the team collects, and she can also vacuum in Crystallize Shards by holding it to strengthen her skill damage. She scales off of attack, making use of the two-piece effect, and her damage is super strong because of it. I mean, it literally makes sense with it being her best in slot. And with her skill having a 9 second cooldown along with two charges, she has perfect uptime on the additional Geo damage bonus. Navia meets the three requirements perfectly, making her a perfect candidate for this set. Now, Archaic Petra could still be a strong support set on Navia due to the fact that holding her skill can pull in crystallized shards, however, she not only could pull in the wrong one, but could also pull in the right one and then pull in a wrong one in afterwards. So, she serves a better role as a sub DPS, especially with damage multipliers like hers. Moving on to Ningguang, we have to see if she passes the test. Ningguang is definitely an attack scaling Geo character. The only thing in her kit that doesn't scale off of attack is the strength of her Jade screen. The amount of damage that it can sustain is directly equivalent to the percentage of Ningguang's max HP. 
but that's fine since it isn't damage based, so check on the damage scaling. Her skill cooldown doesn't cut the 10 second window from Nighttime Whisper's 4 piece effect, so this seems like a no go for the second requirement. However, Ningguang C2 resolves that by resetting the cooldown of her skill when it's destroyed, and this can happen once every 6 seconds. This allows for a better uptime of her skill activation, so this also gets a pass. And finally, obtaining Crystallize Shards. Ningguang doesn't have any ability to pull in any shards, so Ningguang doesn't really get a pass on this. However, this surprisingly doesn't matter. This is due to the fact that the effect states as long as the wielder has a crystallized shard. So any random one will do, and that also means any other teammate can pick it up as well. This is different from Archaic Petra, where you would have to plan out an element to crystallize and then have that character equipped with Archaic Petra to obtain it. Nighttime Whisper solves two glaring issues, the need to crystallize the right element, and have the wielding character pick them up. Nighttime's Whisper is meant to buff Geo, so any crystallize of any element will do, and you can have any other party member pick up the shard and then switch to the Geo character. This only leaves the issue of creating the crystallize shard, and Ningguang has no trouble doing so, since she's a Geo catalyst. Ningguang has also been looking for a pretty proper set since the beginning of the game. She's Geo's OG attack main DPS, and she finally has a set she can capitalize on. Her best team usually is with Zhongli, Shangling, and Bennett, making it for a good amount of crystallize and increased attack. Nighttime Whispers is definitely a better set than Archaic Petra for her, and the only time that the set wouldn't work is if she's being played in Mono Geo, but she can get more out of other teams besides that one, so Nighttime definitely wins over Archaic on Ningguang. Now, as for other characters, I do have to mention a few of them. Ito and Noel both convert defense into attack for their damage. However, it is because they convert so much of their defense into attack that it is super worth it for them to be built on defense stats, so Nighttime does not suit them. Gora does have a similar vacuum pulling effect to Navia, in which his burst can pull in crystallize shards to the active character. This could mean that he could be played as a main DPS, except that this damage scales off of defense instead of attack, so this also doesn't work. And as for Albedo and Zhongli, they do have parts of their kit that do deal geo damage based on attack, but it's not very good. Albedo has solidified himself as a sub DPS who deals almost all of his damage through his skill, which scales off of defense. And Zhongli does have a burst nuke that scales off of attack, but his shield build with HP stats is just way more valuable for his support role. So as we can tell, Nighttime Whispers is very much preferred over Archaic Petra when dealing with the Crystallize reaction. The reason mainly stems from how it can be utilized. Like I said before, Archaic Petra uses Geo as a support element for Pyro, Cryo, Hydro, or Electro, but Nighttime Whispers inadvertently uses those four elements as support for Geo. It completely reverses the equation. Geo being set up as a support element is not optimal, and until there's a way for some unit in the future to finally use it properly, Archaic Petra is always going to lose. Using Crystallize in this way is actually sort of ingenious, turning it into some sort of ammo for Navia, while other Geo units can simply use it as a temporary shield to buff their damage. Additionally, while Nighttime Whispers and Archaic Petra are the crystallized counterparts of each other, Nighttime Whispers and Husk of Opulent Dreams are the DPS counterparts of each other. Husk is clearly meant for defense scaling geo units while at nighttime gives the few attack scaling geo units time to shine. Not to mention, Nighttime Whispers is yet another artifact set that gives an 18% attack boost with its two-piece effect, allowing for more flexibility with two-piece two-piece combos. And as you know, it is kind of sad to see Archaic Petra lose for a second time. Don't get me wrong, the set isn't terrible in theory and the damage bonus is actually extremely beneficial, but pulling it off just takes too many steps. Looking back, artifact sets like Lava Walker, Thunder Soother, Maiden Beloved, and Archaic Petra have all been left in the dust to rot, and it would be nice if there were characters in the future who could actually use these sets. So yeah, this is a pretty short episode simply because there aren't many characters to discuss, and I've pretty much said everything in previous videos. I've recently gotten a bit of an influx of new subscribers, so it's amazing to know that you all enjoy my videos so so much, especially since I don't make any money from this. I know that I'm not always consistent with my uploads, but I really do try to bring you guys the best I can, when I can. I'll also be weaving in other videos in and out of this series, so I hope you show those some love too. You already know a button to press if you want to see more on a regular basis, and if you have something to say, I can only hope that it's nice. Thank you! Bye!